In this video, we're going to make a simple click marker for where you click to move the player, as well as drawing a basic line from the player to that point of the path you're going to travel. Okay, let's jump right back into this. So in this one, we're going to start making a click marker where you, when you click, you can actually see it, and then we're going to draw the path the player is going to take. So I just took an object out of one of the packs I have. You can get any object you want. And what we're going to do is child this to the player. I'm just going to call it click marker. I'll apply that to the prefab and we'll just kind of want to place it however we want. So maybe 1.5 size. Oh, whoops, that's the player. Yeah, that looks about right. Raise it up a little maybe. Yeah, it looks pretty good. We can play with the size and stuff later gonna move it back here okay so we'll keep it at that height apply that again and go to the player script and first thing I'm gonna do here is serialize a field make a private game object we'll call it a uh, click marker prefab and then what I'm gonna do is when we click our set destination I'm going to do click marker prefab dot set active true click marker prefab dot transform dot position equals target. So since that's a vector three, we don't need dot position or anything like that. Okay, and then we're going to want to disable it once we reach the destination. Okay, and this is going to actually have a little bug. We'll have to change something in a minute. I'll show you here. It's going to move with the player, but that's fine. We have to disable it to begin with. We'll probably change the layer later so nothing can collide with it or anything. But And it probably helps if we actually put it into the script. So just drag it in there. Okay, so yeah, now you see it moves relative to the player. So we'll do something to fix that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a empty object here. I'm going to call it visual objects. And what I'm going to do in here, just because I don't want to instantiate and destroy it every time we need it, just to waste resources, since it's already in the scene, we can just move it and move it back. Um, I'm going to do serialize, private transform, and we'll call this one visual object, objects parent. Okay, so what I'm going to do is when we enable this, I'm going to do click marker prefab dot set parent or transform dot set parent equals visual objects dot parent. So now it's going to actually move it. Why is that not working? Okay, there we go. This should move it. And then when we're done, we're going to move it back here. So let's do here. We'll do quick marker prefab dot transform dot set parent. And we'll just set it to this transform. Okay, so let's test this one out now. We can kind of clean that up later and make a better system as you progress in your game, but for now, it, it's going to work. And the one thing I mentioned later, we probably would want to change the layer on this since it's a 3D object, because uh, it does have... Actually, we could just remove the collider and then no other objects would collide with it. Okay, so now that we got the, the marker working, let's start working on drawing a line on our path. Uh, so for this, what we're going to use is the line render. Uh, all it does is it draws lines in your game between however many points that you give it. And the way this works really nice actually is because your nav mesh path that we made, uh, 
So when you click and it moves that path, that nav mesh agent actually stores that path as a series of points. So we can just take the points out of that, put them into the line render and tell it to draw a line between each of those points. So it's basically the same thing, we just have to visually show it. Um, so on the object, we're gonna wanna add a line render. And let's go into our script. And we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna do require component type of line render. That way it's automatic in the future. Okay, and we're gonna get a reference to it. So we're gonna do private line render, my line render. Okay, so we have that. What we're gonna to wanna to do is in start, we're just gonna set our, our default values for it. You can add these as variables, so you can change them in the inspector if you want. I'm just gonna hard code them right in here because I find I almost always use the same settings for this. So we're gonna do the start width. I'm gonna set it to 0.15F, and this is just the width of the line at the first point. And then we're gonna do the end width and do the same because we want it the same line size, but you could actually taper it off. You can change the values to whatever you want. And by default, what we're going to want to do is position count equals zero. Oops, that's an int. So the position count is how many positions there are in the line. So we want to do it as zero right off. Otherwise, you'll see a little mark because it'll try to draw a line even though it doesn't go any distance. So if we do zero, it's it's not gonna have any points and not try to draw at all. Okay, so what we're gonna wanna do here is let's go and we're gonna start a new method. Let's just call this void draw path. Let's know it's we'll do uh draws the path the player will take to reach its destination, I guess. Actually, let me just add that right above the method. Okay, so what we want to do is we're gonna use the line render, then we want position count, and we're gonna equal the nav mesh agent dot path dot corners dot length. So this actually goes through and it checks how many corners are in the path that the, um, the nav mesh is taking. So each time the nav mesh has to turn, it's gonna make a, a corner. And so we're gonna use those corners as points. So it'll make a bit more sense in a minute here. So we'll do my line render, let's set position zero. This is the starting one. And we're just gonna set it as transform.position. Okay, and one other thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna do path.corners.length is less than two. We're just gonna return out. So this is gonna be if, if there's only one point, basically it means there's a straight line to the target. So we don't actually need corners or anything. We just draw one line. So if that's the case, we're gonna skip all this, this code here. So let's do a loop. We're gonna do int i equals one, i smaller than nav mesh, path dot corners dot length, i plus plus. Okay. And in here we just gotta get each point. So we're gonna do point position equals new vector three. Okay, now we gotta set it to this actual point, but I think I'm gonna do it this way instead of doing it all at once. dot x and we're going to transform dot actually no we can use all of them you know what um we could probably just rewrite this as the whole vector but i'm just gonna keep each one separate here dot y and we'll do the same for z uh I'm just doing it this way because i might play with the y value later so then i could set the y and keep it as the x and the z position of the, the player's nav mesh. 
but if I want to add it so we can make the, the line height higher, like it's off the ground, kind of floating in the air, things like that, I'm just going to leave it like this for now. Okay, and then set position I, point position. So all we did here is we set that position in the line render to this one here. Okay, and we're going to want to go back to update. So this is where it does all the checks to see if you reach the destination. We're going to do an else if, and we're going to do my nav mesh agent dot has path. And if it does, we're going to draw the path. So this just checks on the nav mesh if it currently has a path to a destination. If it does, that means it's moving to a path and we want to draw it. If it doesn't have one, it means it either reached it or it's just sitting there idle and there's no reason to draw it. So I believe we covered all the bases. Let's try this out. Okay, so that's the, the rough outline of it. Uh, we can obviously do something to pretty it up and make it look a lot better. But at least we have a path now. And we'll carry on the next video. We'll start making it look a lot better and add a shader graph or materials to it.